Okay, so convex optimization part two. Now in the previous video, we talked about how we want to solve this particular optimization problem where f and the gi are convex and h, the h's are affine. And we reformulated it slightly so that it looks like this, where um, you have a, the primal objective where it's infinite if any of the constraints are violated. And then we lower bounded that by the Lagrangian. And then I claimed at the very end of the video, without proof, that the maximum of the Lagrangian with respect to alpha and beta is equal to the primal objective. Okay, so I'm going to prove that very quickly. All right, so let's say that the constraints are satisfied. So in other words, let's say that all of the GI are less than or equal to zero, and all of the H's are equal to zero. So in that case, how do I maximize the Lagrangian with respect to alpha and beta? Well, the HI terms in the Lagrangian are already zero because the constraints are satisfied. So there's nothing to do there. We don't have to do anything. And already we're seeing some equality there. Um, the GI terms though are, as, as we know, they're non-positive. So if we want to choose alpha to maximize the Lagrangian, how would we do that? Well, normally um, if the GIs are negative, we would want to try to set the alpha i's to be negative because the negative times a negative is positive and we'll get something really large. But the problem is the alphas are not allowed to be negative. The best we can do is to set the alpha to be zero and that will, give up, that will maximize um, the Lagrangian for us. So if we set the alphas to zero, um, then in fact, Lagrangian is exactly equal to the primal and they're both equal to f of x, okay? So that's one half the story. That's when the constraints are satisfied. What if the constraints are not satisfied? So if the constraints are not satisfied, how do we then maximize the Lagrangian with respect to alpha and beta? Well, as we know, if the constraints are not satisfied, that means we are talking about the right side of this, um, this function here. So this is when GI is positive, right? GI of X is positive. And in that case, I've, I've remember the function, the primal is infinite here, whereas the Lagrangian is equal to alpha times U. So to make alpha times U, U as large as possible or alpha times GI of X, right? How do you make that as large as possible? You just make alpha go to infinity and then you get infinity. That's the maximum of the Lagrangian with respect to alpha. Okay, so you make alpha infinity if the G constraints are violated. Now, what happens if the H constraints are violated? So if the H constraints are violated, you are not at the origin, right? You are either, um, you, H is either positive or it's negative. And either way, it's represented by this line, beta times H, HI of X, okay? So to make that infinite, what do we do? Well, let's say HI is positive so that we're on, um, on just the right side of that line. So in that case, what we can do is make beta positive and as large as possible, like make beta infinite, great. Now, on the other hand, if HI is negative, then we can set beta equal to negative infinity and force that line all the way up back to um, infinity. And so in that case, again, no matter which constraints are violated, when you maximize with respect to alpha and beta, you get something that is infinite. So the maximum of the Lagrangian with respect to alpha and beta, no matter whether the constraints are violated or whether they're not, no matter which constraints are violated, you get back to the primal. Okay, so the maximal alpha and beta get us back to the primal objective. Cool. Okay, so I can now write that the primal objective equals the maximum of the Lagrangian with respect to alpha and beta, keeping in mind, of course, that everything goes, goes crazy if alpha is allowed to go negative um, because then the Lagrangian is no longer a lower bound for the primal. So we have to make sure that alpha is greater than or equal to zero all the time. Okay, so that means our primal problem, I can rewrite it as, so the, the primal problem that we started with was to minimize f of x, right? Minimize f of x subject to constraints. So that's the same thing as saying, minimize the primal objective with respect to x, 
And then, since the primal objective is equal to the maximum of alpha and beta of the Lagrangian, I can just stick that right in there. And now I have a new version of my primal problem. Okay, so I just want to finish with a little bit of terminology here. So the primal objective is called theta p, we know that already. The solution of the primal problem, I'm going to call it x star. So star means optimal. And then p star is the optimal value of the primal objective. Okay, And then um, if the constraints are satisfied, if the constraints are satisfied, then we say that x is primal feasible. So feasible, all feasible means is that constraints are satisfied. You can be feasible but not be optimal. Feasible just means, again, that, that some constraints are satisfied. Okay. So you don't even have to look at the objective to determine whether something's feasible. All right. Thank you very much.